everyone, and welcome back to my channel. I am the one and only infamous Kentucky Yankee, without a doubt. And today we're going to be working on this old moped, and we're actually going to get it running, but its revival is quite short term, unfortunately, guys. Sometimes things just aren't meant to be. But along the way, I will show you several tricks of the trade. I hope you guys will stay tuned and enjoy the video. Time now to work on the fuel system. Let's remove this rusty, nasty tank and this carburetor and get them cleaned up. Let me show you the inside of that tank real quick before we do that. So I had to turn the light on the camera so you guys could see in there. Look at that. Man, she's crustified. Nasty looking inside that tank. A lot of it's flaking and caked up and everything. Petrol tank has been tumbling for about 30 minutes, so I'm going to take it off and show it to you, good or bad. The results of rock water soap tumble washing this petrol tank have indeed proved to be whiz bang. Look down in that tank, guys. Look how clean that is. That's cleaner than it was when it came out of the factory. I'm quite impressed and quite pleased with the results of this beautiful fuel tank. I'm sure a lot of you already know, but you can clean chrome with steel wool, like very fine steel wool. See how it's rusty? Clean, by what I mean by clean is you can get the rust off. And see there? It polishes it right up. I believe our choke is froze up in there. Taking the bowl off to see if I can push the choke cable out from the inside. The plunger's stuck in there. Look at there. Woo! Thick and crusted up. Ah, uh, not a problem. We'll get her fixed up. And I can't, I don't have access to the choke under here, so not sure what I'm going to do about that. What happened was I ended up getting a little rough with it, pulled that cable out, and it bent those two things back, and that choke plunger is stuck in there, and I soaked it overnight. I'm going to see if I can get it off, get it out today. What I did was I put a finishing nail through this, tube here and I'm gonna tap on it with a hammer and we'll see if it comes out check it out look at there I really got lucky I was able to reshape this without cracking it or breaking it or anything and what we say here in Kentucky when something like that happens is even a blind pig finds an acorn every now and then now it's time to put these parts into my ultrasonic cleaner which is equally as vintage as the moped. And as LG would say, now we wait. You never know, we may be able to revise this petcock. So this is the best my ultrasonic cleaner would do with this carburetor. It's still corroded up a little bit. All that stuff, none of it's loose. I think it looks worse on film than it, than it actually is, but I'm going to try and put this thing together. I think it'll be fine. One little tip, always run a wire through every orifice 
in the carburetor and if the orifice or hole is very small use a bread tie remember those old wire bread ties I don't know anything about this oil injection so I'm gonna take it off kind of get a peek at it maybe take it apart clean it up let's see what's going on with it here I'd like to use it but you got to be careful with these things if they don't work you'll destroy your engine more rust more crust I'm a little afraid to take that out but I think I'm gonna I just did oh okay so that's cool it, it's it's a little rusty in there but it doesn't look terrible but I'm gonna clean all this up before we put it back in I took this oil injection pump apart to do a little exploring and clean it up and see if we could use it that way we don't have to pre-mix the gas and it's awesome I thought this was some kind of diaphragm pump you know just by the way it looks looks like a weed eater fuel pump or something but it's not not at all so you take this off all it is guys is it's gear driven it's just a gear pump just like any oil pump and there's that gear and it runs off of this right here right like that and it spins that gear pump and provides oil to the engines it's very simple and I have no clue now after looking at this I've never had a reason to look in inside of a oil injection pump but after looking at it there's no reason in the world I would not hook this sucker back up I'm going to and I'm not afraid of it one single bit time to get that cover that flywheel off the other side because I think it's so rusted up we need to get that checked out and fixed. It won't get spark unless we clean all that up, I'm sure. Will this work? I don't know. My hope is that it will. You, look there. Can't believe it. Man, we've had luck pulling this stuff off. Sometimes it can be stuck on there pretty good. So that's cool. Look at that. And look in there. Yikes messy 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 and I kind of thought that was a little too easy the flywheel was not pressed on there on that tapered shaft it's this little piece here and I've got to get it off because I'm afraid it might be rusty where the points glide on it and I don't want to wear everything out there she goes boys Woo! I gotta tell you that is nerve-wracking. See how that's all rusted? So when it glides, see there's a big nasty spot. That's gonna make the points not work right. So after getting that rust off of there, it's very pitted, look. It's kind of deep there on that spot. There it is with some JB Weld on it. And you need to watch what you're doing if you're gonna cob stuff like this it's a lobe so that the points will open this side is thicker than this side so when I file that JB weld down I really need to pay attention to what I'm doing to make sure it's not too high or low and now just talking about filing I have my fingernail file file here and I will clean up these old junky points and here we go again should I put new ones in there of course I should. Will these work? Probably. Ho ho! Looky there! Found something I'd been looking for. I'd been wondering, where's the condenser? You know, you got points, where's the condenser? But I thought I'm not gonna say nothing, don't be an idiot. There it is, right by the coil underneath the seat. Ha <laughs> ha! Here's our little piece all JB welded back up. And I think it looks pretty good. I sanded it down with a thousand grit. I even put a little polish on it. And I'm sure there's somebody out there right now, some little feller with a bellyache, thinking, this idiot just JB welded that piece, and it'll never work. And if it does, it's still not done right. To that feller, I say, when you buy a moped, you fix it however you want. If you'd like to buy new parts, buy them. And bonus, if this doesn't work, you can rip me in the comments. With this piece on and the nut on there, I set the points at 15 thousandths. And 25 foot-pounds Seem, seems about right. Ah, uh, this is a freak show, boys. 
Let's see if we can get her here. Oh, good grief. How about this instead? Good enough. I'm going to set you up and let's see if this thing has spark. Looking good. So I've been kicking it over a little bit, spraying a little gas in there, putting around with it, seeing if I can get it to pop. And running it pop a little bit, but not that great. Look here, guys. Look at that. You see that? It's nasty, whatever it is. And if you notice the shape of it, it's the same size as this tailpipe. It was stopped up, and I kind of figured by the way it sounded. So what I did was took the spark plug out, took my air hose blower, stuck it in there, turned the flywheel a little bit to get it in the right position, and blew that crap out. Let's crank her over now and see what happens. Sounds a lot different. What do you think of that, boys? That's all it was. The exhaust was stopped up. I've seen this before. No sense in carrying on. We know it's going to run. Let's get the carburetor finished up, cleaned up, put back together, and ride this thing down the road. All right, guys, so I got the carburetor back together, put back on the bike, everything's together. And I want to show you, look at that, the petcock back there. It's hiding back there, hard to get a view of. It actually, I was actually able to clean that thing and make it work, believe it or not. So I did end up firing this thing up, and I did want to take you guys along with that journey for the first kick or two, but... See there, there's evidence of it. What happened was, let me explain. What happened was, I was wanting to prime that oil pump up that I told you that I wasn't scared of, that wouldn't fail. It wouldn't work at all. But this thing started up the first or second crank, I can't remember, honestly, I believe the first crank. It started right up. It sounds like a coffee can, a metal coffee can full of ball bearings. Let's take this jewel for a rip while we can before it scatters itself all over the shop, in the yard, and everything else. guys bad news no rip it's not gonna happen and what happened is guys it's just it's starting and stalling and not wanting to run and I think it's just getting too much air it's a two-stroke I think the bearings the main bearings are bad in it and uh, with that being bad the seals are probably leaking air by them it's just not gonna happen the old engines tired and we're not taking it for a rip unfortunately guys I don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing they uh, convert them put different engines in them sometimes, that'd probably be my best route because by the time you buy parts to redo that whole engine, have too much into this piece of junk. So, most likely, honestly guys, and because I am always honest with you people, I'm gonna tell you right now, this thing most likely is headed to the Craigslist. Thanks for watching guys, I hope we have more luck next time with our projects than we did with this one. Musty one, 10,000, 56, I think. Kentucky Yankee, zero. Goose eggs. <laughs>